celebrating Morocco Day, Morocco's national day. It's a celebration and commemoration of the installment, the enthronement of His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco. Now, this day is celebrated separately from Independence Day, which is in November. And Her Excellency, of course, Her Excellency Iman Wadil of Morocco, the King's representative here in Ghana, the ambassador of Morocco to Ghana, will tell us more about that when we take a sit down with her to start this whole celebration. But hey, I tried to look regal. I hope I got it. I hope I'm playing the parts. <laughs> And this evening we get to speak to so many interesting people who represent Morocco in so many different ways here in Ghana. My name is Apioko once again. Welcome to Diplomatic License. Welcome back. You're still watching Diplomatic License right here on City TV. My name is Apioko. Now, if you just joined us, I have been speaking to Her Excellency Iman Wadil, who is the ambassador of Morocco to Ghana, the representative of King Mohammed VI of Morocco. And today we're celebrating Morocco's National Day. Now, what does that mean? What we're actually doing is commemorating the enthronement of His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco. So in Morocco, the National Day is very different from the Independence Day because today we celebrate what happened all the way back in July 30th, on July 30th in 1999. Okay, so that's the day the king ascended the throne. Now it's time to get into the celebration. A small one, unfortunately, because of COVID. But hey, we're observing all of the COVID safety protocols here at the residence of the ambassador of Morocco to Ghana. Now tonight, we'll begin all the celebrations officially with a speech and address from Her Excellency Iman Wadil. And then some other people will be speaking, including the president of an association that represents students who are Ghanaian, but who studied in Morocco at some point in their lives. We'll also be hearing from a lot of interesting people who have assimilated into the fabric of Ghana, but who represents Morocco and its wonderful greatness. And indeed, all the things that His Majesty King Mohammed VI has been doing for Morocco as a country in one way, shape or form. There'll be food too. If you caught my previous episode with Her Excellency, then you know that Moroccan food is a big thing. There are Africans like us, so hey, it's to be expected. So let's go, ceremony begins. license right here on City TV. My name is Apioko. Now if you're just joining us, I will reiterate that not too long ago, I spent some time with Her Excellency Iman Wadil of Morocco. She is the ambassador of Morocco to Ghana and the representative, of course, of King Mohammed of Morocco in Ghana. Now, I spent a lot of time with her and I learned a lot about Morocco. And for those of you who missed those episodes, go to CityTube, click on the links there and see what there is to learn. And there is so much of it. But today, it's Morocco National Day. And it's a big deal in Morocco. National Day is a big deal for any country, but there's something special about Morocco Day, Morocco National Day, when it comes to this country in particular. It, it, it doesn't mark Independence Day. And I'll allow Her Excellency to explain that and many other things about this very royal, you know, with everything, Morocco, it's royalty and, and it's regal and it's majesty. So I'm going to allow her to explain what this royal national day means and we'll learn many other things. Oh, Hi. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> thank you thank for, you for the me. nice introduction. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me again. We are most welcome. Yeah, it's, it's always a joy to come here. It's my pleasure. Thank no. you. Not just because you are such a wonderful person <laughs> and of course your residence is lovely, but the things I learned from you about life and Morocco mm -hmm. are always so enriching. Thank, Thank you very you. much. As you rightfully said, uh, our national day, which is today, uh, doesn't mark the Independence Day, which is the 18th of November. Today marks 
the enthronement uh, anniversary of His Majesty King Mohammed VI, uh, may Allah assist him. It's uh, now, today it marks the 22nd anniversary, anniversary of this enthronement. Okay. Uh, and, um, that is uh, an anniversary that is very dear to the hearts and minds of the, of the Moroccan people. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on the 30th of July, 1999, mm -hmm. King Mohammed VI mm -hmm. ascended the throne. Exactly. Uh, same year as Otum for Exactly. Yes. What okay. a wonderful, wonderful coincidence. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about why this is the tradition, because mm -hmm. that means that his father, the late King Hassan, mm -hmm. when he was alive, there was a different national day, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, our uh, national day back then was the 3rd of March. Okay. That is the date when he, the late uh, King Hassan II yeah. ascended the throne of his ancestors. It is uh, specific to, uh, to Morocco. We do also, of course, uh, celebrate the Independence Day, mm -hmm. but our national day is today, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, why is it so important to celebrate something like this and on a national level? Of course, you're a kingdom, mm -hmm. but there must be something special about mm -hmm. celebrating a day like this because like you said you also have an independence day but what yes. makes this day so special it is the uh, the uh, link that links the moroccan people and the moroccan population to the alawite uh, throne it is a renewal of al -bay'a, which we we call in arabic al -bay'a, which is the um this not the submission but the, uh, the recognition of the His Majesty as the leader of the country and as the, uh, the, um, the, guarant the guarant guarantor of peace, stability and continuity of the kingdom. Peace, stability and, and, the continuity. and continuity of mm -hmm. the kingdom. Yes. Of course, and, and I think continuity is very important because of course. King Mohammed VI family has mm -hmm. been on the throne si since yes. 1631, it yes. is. Very mm -hmm. long time. Very long time, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, I find it very interesting and very special that you mentioned that it's your way of, you know, just reminding yourselves and renewing that mm -hmm. vow, not just for you to your king, but your king to his people exactly. as well. Are there any special rituals that happen on this day? Yes, there is the celebration in all corners of the of the of Morocco in north and the south, and there is also on the second day there is this um, the renewal of vows by the. Uh, the, uh, the armed forces and all walks of life in Morocco to His Majesty. So there is a huge ceremony that normally, uh, not in COVID times of course, <laughs> but normally it's a very um, expected ceremony that all the, the Moroccan population are looking for. And we all sit in our home and watch the, uh, uh, this very big ceremony, very regal as you mentioned, and <laughs> it has it carries so many meanings, and we uh, we identify as a people with this uh, okay. ceremony. Yes. So, what are some of the things that you can expect to see or hear mm -hmm. during the ceremony? I mean, are there march pass, for example? Um, is there any specific dress that is worn? Of course, the, the specific dress is the Moroccan dress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for us women, we are very uh, spoiled. Mm -hmm. So we get uh, to wear <laughs> colorful uh, attires. Of course, traditional ones like the one I'm wearing. Uh, you look very wearing. lovely, Thank by you. the way. <laughs> like the one I'm wearing today. But the men uh, are um, not very lucky. <laughs> they, uh, they are in their white bright white uh, uh, jalabas yes. and the t which is the traditional wear and official wear for Moroccan uh, people and we also all expect the um, expect with the much eagerness to hear the speech by his majesty the king in the evening and um, reflect on what has been done okay. during all this uh, the last year and because it's the 22nd anniversary, we also uh, reflect on all what has been done, all the, um, the road taken, all the achievements, and we, we thank God for, uh, for, for it. So, yes, and we thank, of course, His Majesty for all has, what has been done in, in Morocco in terms of achievement, development, and everything. Yes. Okay. Now, I know that 
Of course, and you, you taught me so well the last time that Morocco is made up of different kinds of people, mm -hmm. um, both when it comes to ethnicity and also when it comes to religion. Mm -hmm. Now, on this National Day, do you see these different cultures or different ethnic groups doing anything interesting? Or, or do you see the different religions that are represented also maybe praying special prayers? How is it all, you know, wo woven into one big piece? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we are lucky today that the, uh, the National Day falls on a Friday, which is uh, the Muslim prayer day in uh, particular. So the Muslims, as I said, would go to the mosque and pray for the life and for the, um, the success of uh, His Majesty and for, of Morocco, of course. But we, as I mentioned, we are uh, um, a kaleidoscope of people. We are um, Berbers, we are Arabs, we are uh, uh, Muslims, we are Jews, we are different people. We are Hassanis in the north, in the south of Morocco. We are Sahrawis. We are Rifans from the yeah. from the uh, north, extreme north of Morocco. So all of these people come together. This this occasion is a, is indeed a uniting um, uh, occasion for all of us. Okay. There is no uh, different way of mm -hmm. celebrating it. We come together as as one people and everybody uh, has the same uh, feeling about it mm -hmm. and we come together of course all areas of morocco are celebrating not uh, in under covid uh, of course but uh, usually it's a lot of joy a lot of happiness and uh, and manifestations you know uh, all the um, the villages are um, um, decorated and the, the roads are with the Moroccan flag, with the portraits of His Majesty everywhere in Morocco now. The particular t uh, this year we have, um, we have seen that um, with the uh, peace uh, um, accord with Israel, we have our, our uh, Moroccan nationals living in, uh, in Israel, mm -hmm. celebrating it, uh, celebrating National Day with us okay. from there. Wow. So yes, we today I have. So seen it's an international celebration. It has become <laughs> <laughs> yes because the the tie between uh, Morocco and Moroccan Jews has never been severed, mm. all uh, um, with all the time. But this peace uh, peace accords that are that were brokered thanks to the enlightened um, leadership of His Majesty mm. King Mohammed VI are very important to all of us. They have made it possible for our uh, brothers and sisters in uh, Israel to be able to to travel to uh, to go to come to Morocco and to to they are they there has been like I think two uh, two flights direct mm -hmm. flights for for them to come and visit. Uh, um, they, of course, they they were coming every year, but now it's easier for them okay. to go because they would have to go to uh, Europe or other countries to then charter a flight to go to Morocco. Now it's a direct fly. Mm -hmm. So as I said, I, uh, the, the Philharmonic um, Orchestra of, uh, of Tel Aviv, I think, of, or of Israel, has uh, played the national anthem today. <laughs> so it's, uh, it was very beautiful. beautiful. It's very beautiful. And Sounds it testifies beautiful. to the links uh, that the Moroccan Jews uh, have with their uh, home uh, yeah. country. Sounds beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure as the, the day progresses, we'll get to meet some Moroccans who live in Ghana, yes. who are doing wonderful and very laudable things here. We'll get mm -hmm. to meet some students as well yes, who of course. Um, studied in Morocco. Who studied, who studied yeah. in Morocco and are now very well integrated in the social tissue of, mm -hmm. of, uh, of Ghana, who are contributing with uh, what they learned in Morocco, a contributing to the success and development of their home country. Okay. Uh, we are very proud to have uh, this very vibrant association of uh, Ghana, all students of Morocco. <laughs> they are very nice and very, um, uh, they are also our kind of our ambassadors okay. to, uh, to, to Ghana. Okay. And uh, we, we recherish all the occasions we have to discuss with them and to meet them. Okay. So I'm glad that today will be the occasion for you also to meet them. Of course, the Moroccan, uh, uh, Moroccan community uh, living in Ghana, unfortunately, a lot of them have traveled to Morocco because, as I told you, uh, um, His Majesty has been uh, kind enough to, to ask the uh, national career to reduce the fares for, for the Moroccan community living abroad to be able to visit. After and he's those reduced the fares by a huge margin, yes, less than than $300 yes, from, from Accra Ghana, yes, to, from Ghana yes, to Morocco. That's very kind of him. Yes, because our Moroccan community living abroad have also suffered like everybody else 
from the impacts of COVID. Mm -hmm. So this is a royal gesture that was extended to them so that they can also re reunite with their families and uh, uh, go back to their home country. So a lot of them, unfortunately, have, uh, have unfortunately <laughs> for us, <laughs> have uh, traveled to Morocco. So the, the ones that are here are going to, uh, to be present at the ceremony. So, Your Excellency, that brings me to my next point, and it's a wonderful way to segue into this conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, the last time I was here, I learned a lot about you and a lot about Morocco, mm -hmm. but you're in Ghana, mm -hmm. and I do know that you're here with one of your three beautiful daughters, and she looks so much like you. <laughs> so it, Just currently. The other ones are in Morocco yeah, now for holiday. Yes. Okay. <laughs> also, they left you behind. <laughs> they left me behind, yes. What has it been like? I mean, of course, you have your personal experience, mm -hmm. and this is not your first time in Ghana. Yes. You were a deputy yes. ambassador. Mm -hmm. This was in which year? Uh, from 2007 to 2012. Okay, so mm -hmm. Ghana is not new to you, mm -hmm. right? but now you're here as the head of mission yes. and as the legitimate representative mm -hmm. of, of King Mohammed yes. the Sixth. What is it like, and what's it like having to do this with your family? And, and I also want to know how your husband is managing this because a lot of people have the perception, we're Africans, let's be honest. <laughs> a lot of people have the perception that women who hold positions of mm -hmm. power, women who are career oriented, mm -hmm. they can't be married, they can't have families, and their mm -hmm. husbands will have problems. Yes. But clearly you have a wonderful family, mm -hmm. a wonderful marriage, a husband who's supportive. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, will be, I will be shy. <laughs> I will Don't. get all emotional because I haven't seen him for a month now. <laughs> uh, well, of course, my husband is, uh, has been of a lot of support to me. Uh, I don't think I would have made it the first time uh, without him because he was with me on, in 2007. We arrived together. Uh, my daughter, my eldest, I had only one daughter at the time. She was two, two years oh. old and uh, he had to resign his you job. You traveled with a two-year-old to a totally different country yes. to take up a high-powered and high-pressure job. Yes, and oh. uh, the fact <laughs> that he had to resign his, uh, from his job to accompany me uh, here was, um, as for us Africans, as you know, was a huge sacrifice for uh, a man yes. to, to do, uh, especially in our uh, society. But he was, he's, He's been always very open-minded, and he said that um, he believes in my uh, um, my capacity. He believed in me, and that we want, if we want to be a family, we have to stick together. And there is no way that we can do long-distance uh, marriage or <laughs> long-distance relationship. That doesn't work. Um, doesn't work properly. I know that um, uh, some people do it very well, but uh, in our case. I, we were very young also, I was um, 27 when I arrived in Ghana for the first time. So it was, it was the, um, the early years of marriage and it's, we were married like four years before I came. So it was a very nice experience in, and ever since he has been a very good support. Um, we, uh, we had our second daughter which you saw earlier, uh, she's now 11. She, I brought her to Ghana when she was one week old. Wow. Yes, uh, I had my leave, I delivered her and then I brought her. She was one week. She's a perfect Ghanaian now. <laughs> so you, you uh, wait, let, let's, <laughs> and viewers, let me entreat you to observe this. You had a baby mm -hmm. and one week later, you're on a plane back to Ghana, yes. back to post. Yes. What was that experience like? Uh, it was. Uh, um, it wasn't easy because I had a C-section. Wow! <laughs> but wow. Uh, but we wow. had uh, actually we had the delegation come in, a very important one. And uh, at the time it, there wasn't um, the embassy was understaffed. We were only the ambassador and then the deputy. So I had to rush. There was no way I could leave the ambassador alone uh, with such a huge uh, delegation. So I I came and. Um, it, Actually, we uh, have all the, um, the help from everybody here. The people are so nice. Uh, we had all the assistance from everybody. We arrive, even arriving at the airport was such... Uh, <laughs> people would not... Oh, oh yeah, so yeah, just go. <laughs> just go, don't stand here. And then, yes. So my daughters, they enjoy themselves a lot in Ghana. 
Uh, the, the small one is eight. She is at, with all her sisters at the French school. They are very well integrated. They have Ghanaian friends. They, they have parties every Saturday <laughs> at the house. We, we, um, we enjoy life in Ghana, actually. All of us, all of us on the same, on the same level. That's wonderful to hear. But let's backtrack a little. Mm -hmm. Before we became a bigger family, mm -hmm. there was you and there was your husband. Yes. We met in Morocco? Yes, we did. Okay. So how? Because I remember the last time we spoke, we, you were born in... Uh, so you were born... In Zagora. In, yes, in Zagora. I grew up in Marrakesh and Casablanca. Yes, with your grandma and then yes. later your parents. Exactly. So where did you meet? I, we met in Tangier. I was following the, uh, my studies at the, uh, in the school fed of translation. It was my first year, it was his last year. <laughs> so we met one year, we, um, we met and we decided that we wanted to be together. And then he went back to, uh, to, more, to Casablanca, he's from Casablanca, so he found a job settled in, uh, in Casablanca and I, was, I still had two years to go uh, in uh, Tangier. We did some distance thing <laughs> back at the time, but we were not married. We were just uh, boyfriends, uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, and we um, we kept meeting because I at the time I had uh, braces on my, uh, oh. so I had to go every month to my doctor. I didn't have to really, but it was That's an excuse. That's why you were It was an excuse. It was to an go. excuse to go back to to Casablanca. So every month we would meet, and it was. Uh, time flew by, you know how these things are with the exams and with the school and a lot of um, walking and coming and going and then everything went and then uh, I got my diploma in 2003, we married in 2004 <laughs> and our first daughter is born on 2005. <laughs> That's why. Right. So like back to back to back to back. <laughs> exactly, so we didn't lose any time. So. So Your Excellency, I know we have to get ready for this evening, mm -hmm. so I'm going to leave you for now and please do engage my help where you need it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure later on we'll talk more about Moroccan food, we'll see other things that are happening, and we'll hear an official speech from Her Excellency Emmanuel Adil. Of course, she's the ambassador of Morocco to Ghana and the representative of King Mohammed VI. We'll be right back. Sheikh Mustafa Abdul Hamid, President of the Ghana branch of His Majesty Mohammed VI Foundation of African Ulemas. Mr. Peter um, Panin Anaman, President of the Association of Former Students of Ghana in Morocco, GAMOSA, and dear members of the association, our friends uh, of the media, distinguished uh, guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
fellow Moroccans, Mumatilu Jali al Maghribiya Birana, Al Ikhwal Aiza. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, welcome to the Moroccan residence in Ghana. Thank you for joining us in celebrating the 22nd anniversary of His Majesty King Mohammed VI accession to the throne of his glorious ancestors. As we celebrate this auspicious occasion, dear to the hearts and minds of our nation and people, we also reflect on the, 20, on the last 22 years under the enlightened leadership of His Majesty King Mohammed VI, during which Morocco experienced a wave of reforms which set the country in a dynamic development path. The modernization of infrastructure, the launch of several sectoral strategies, and Morocco's commitment to a vast renewable energy program all contributed to strengthen the economy, support, support growth, and prepare for the future. This year's celebration coincides with the recent presentation before His Majesty of the new development model for a new, more prosperous Morocco, a Morocco of skills, an inclusive, united, sustainable, and ambitious Morocco. While it reflects the singularity of the kingdom's institutional democratic model, whereby the monarchy is the centerpiece of the state, the symbol of the nation's unity, the guarantor of the balance of power, and the bearer of the long-term strategic vision, the new development model consists of targeted development objectives that would elevate the kingdom up to the top third in the various, of the various global rankings by 2035. These objectives include doubling the GDP per capita by 2035, ensuring that more, that more than 90% of pupils master elementary skills and competencies by the end of primary school, increasing the number of doctors per inhabitant to reach WHO standards and bringing the informal employment rate down to 20%. Boosting the participation rate of women from 22% in 2019 up to 45%. And achieving a more than 80% satisfaction rate among citizens with respect to the administration and public services. Ladies and gentlemen, Leveraging our geography, our common history, our unique immaterial capital, and the potential of our youth, Morocco and Ghana stand strong and united to work together to achieve our higher interests, the stability and prosperity of our peoples and of our continent, and the ongoing dynamic economic dialogue and cooperation will testify to this. In the last two years, Morocco and Ghana have extended tremendous efforts to curb the effects of the pandemic on our economies and on our health systems, the challenges raised by the COVID-19 crisis and the risks of future health crises make it now urgent to strengthen our regional cooperation in developing Africa's health systems capacity for surveillance, prevention and resilience to meet our needs. The late president, Kwame Nkrumah, put it rightfully. I quote, it is clear that we must find an African solution to our problems. And this can only be found in African unity. Divided, we are weak. United, Africa could become one of the greatest forces for good in the world. It is high time we, for us to be united. Long live Morocco and long live Ghana. And long live Morocco-Ghana friendship. Thank you.
good, good evening, everyone. Um, Your Excellency, all protocol observed. Um, we are very glad to be part of this great celebration. Uh, we have, since we left Morocco, we have always known Morocco to be our country. And it has been our duty as Ghanaian Moroccans to always promote Morocco wherever we find ourselves. And this is possible because we received, we were received very well when we were in Morocco, and all that Morocco has done for us means a lot to us. So on this special day, we are happy to join you to celebrate your national day and our national day. And at the same time, wish you the happiest national day ever. Uh, we are very proud to have studied in Morocco. And I can say that all Moroccan, Moroccans have every right to be proud of your country because you have a very beautiful country and you should be very proud of it. And we are very proud as Ghanaians who study in Morocco to be associated with Morocco. Um, this is not time for a long speech, but then I will see the opportunity to thank His Majesty King Mohammed VI for his love and vision for African students. We study actually with over 40, students from over 45 African countries. And this actually helped us to bond with people from different faiths, people from different African countries. And this wasn't possible if not for our education in Morocco. So it's obvious that through the scholarship offered to African students, His Majesty is actually promoting and enhancing regional integration. And we believe that, that with this, we can easily achieve what the Pan-Africanists started, that is, building a united Africa. And we believe that if the other African countries will follow the steps of Morocco and offer other African students opportunity to study in our various countries, it will not be difficult for us, for the future president, maybe the next five to 10 years, sitting on a table to think of the continent's future because they would have already met somewhere which is maybe through education in different countries. So we want to, once again, say thank you very much. Thanks to um, His Majesty, the government of Morocco, and the good people of Morocco, because if Moroccans were not that nice, we wouldn't have students coming to study in Morocco. We have thousands of students always going, and more want to come. And as we always say that Oliver Twigs asked for more, Your Excellency, please, we need more slots for Ghana. We need slots for masters as well, and all the other opportunities that you have for us. I know His Majesty is generous, and definitely will give us more. So to cut, a lot, to cut my long uh, speech short, I, wi I wish um, His Majesty King Mohammed VI happy National Day. The Moroccan government, happy National Day. Her Excellency, happy National Day. The Moroccan community in Ghana, we wish you a happy, uh, happy National Day, and happy National Day to all the Moroccans across the world. Thank you very much. God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you. And now we can eat, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Please, you're welcome. Dinner time, and I'm 
with Her Excellency, she's going to walk me through what we're having for dinner this week. We've got our gloves on, COVID because, but we enjoy oh, the food. What happened here? <laughs> Accident. <laughs> so this is a, a eggplant with tomato. This is a spinach with the olive. And this is carrots with olives. Okay. So this is what we had. The last time. Yes, minus the spinach. Minus the spinach, yes. Okay. Please. Okay. It's supposed to be small portions. <laughs> <laughs> but if you like it, you can have more. <laughs> This is the Ghanaian uh, uh -huh. salad. <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, Your daughter's favorite fried rice. Yes, the fried rice, the chicken. Yeah, I have some fried rice. Okay, so this is fried rice done the Ghanaian way. This is the fried rice and this is the jollof rice. Oh, okay, it's, so okay, so it's not very red. It's not orange. It's not very red. Okay. Oh, it's fine. Okay. 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 This is grilled chicken. Yes. This is some uh, seafood Moroccan way with olives. Okay. Is it spicy? Yes. Okay. This is mi minced meat uh, bullets, uh, Moroccan way. We call it kafta. Okay. Kafta. Kafta, yes. Okay. Is it lamb? Or beef. Yes, it's lamb. I thought so. <laughs> you know we how yes. much we love the Americans love their and lamb. And this is the couscous. 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 It's so full. Maybe we can come back for yes. the couscous. Alone. The couscous. <laughs> yes. Okay. So my plate is super full, but we'll eat. We'll eat. <laughs> Where can we sit? celebrating Morocco Day, Morocco's National Day, here at the residence of the Ambassador of Morocco to Ghana, Her Excellency Iman Wadil. And I have here Mr. Mohammed, who is the General Manager of CIMAF, and he's Moroccan, a very handsome Moroccan gentleman. We're going to talk a little bit about business and how Morocco and Ghana are fusing that. Hello. We're very, we're very welcome. Thank Martin you. Lysons Thank you. From City TV. So let's talk a little bit about the work that CIMAF is doing here and how it's a thriving example of the business that Morocco and Ghana are doing together. Okay. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to say something. Today is our day, is uh, the throne day. We are celebrating the 22nd anniversary of accession of His Majesty Mohammed VI. Uh, to, the, to the throne and uh, it's a great pleasure for us to gather here with all Moroccans and Ghanaians in the residence of uh, Her Excellency, the Ambassador of the uh, Kingdom of Morocco. 
So of course, uh, we I would like to congratulate you know, all of us and all Moroccans and uh, Ghanaians who are celebrating with us this event today for this uh, great event for us. And I wish all of them, all of us, Moroccans and Ghanaians, prosperity and uh, and uh, well-being and. Uh, uh, to uh, to have a good business Absolutely. together. Business so, <laughs> so let's get to our business. I'm representing Sima uh, Ghana. Sima Ghana is a cement manufacturing um, uh, industry. We are settled here uh, since 2000, um, uh, 2016, end of 2016. We are already in um, in uh, 14 countries uh, around uh, West Africa. Uh, Simaf, Simon de l'Afrique in France, is a 100% African uh, company, 100% Moroccan owned company. Um, we have uh, started initially in Morocco by building two integrated plants in Morocco and we then we have expanded our, our, our activity to, to Côte d'Ivoire and to many other countries. Ghana is very special because it's the, the only uh, English-speaking country we are settled in. So, so it's for us uh, really uh, a good opportunity to, to, uh, to make these cultures closer because we are more close to French-speaking countries. Uh, even in terms of culture, we are more close. Now, today we are, let's say, we are learning also uh, the, the Anglo-Saxon culture and specifically the, the, Ghana, the Ghana culture. And sincerely, we, uh, since I'm here, uh, since 2018, we were well welcomed by Ghanaians. So we have integration was very easy for us and uh, even uh, our products, people are accepting our product easily uh, thanks to, to, of course, our professionalism, our uh, quality, our, uh, our, our, all our, all the, all the, um, let's say, uh, expertise we are bringing to, uh, to this uh, uh, sector of construction and also to our uh, African uh, African culture. We are very close to to, to our African uh, uh, brothers, our Ghanaians. So uh, it makes things uh, very easy and very uh, very uh, very easy to live. We are so, very happy. So I'm going to well, I'm going to ask you my next question. Uh, well, a part of it in French. So I'll start in English and move to French. Now you said Ghana is the only English speaking. West African and African country that you're in at the moment. Pourquoi vous avez choisi le Ghana? Vous voulez que je continue en français ou en anglais? Oh, well, un peu, and then back to English. <laughs> so I asked him, why did Sima choose Ghana? <laughs> Look, sincerely, it's, uh, I think, um, it's, uh, Ghana is one of uh, the most, uh, let's say, uh, growing, uh, West African countries and uh, I think that the governments and uh, people of Ghana are doing great work to develop their country. We can see that during the last five years and even before a lot of uh, construction works, a lot of infrastructure building works. And, oh yes, we are always uh, building. You are always <laughs> we building. are always building. And, uh, and I think it's also uh, it's also uh, in the view also to diversify our our cultures. We are not only in Africa. We have another um, uh, another um, uh, factory in uh, France. So, so we have one in France, one in Ghana, and the rest all are in uh, in uh, in francophone uh, countries. So, sincerely, for me, it's a, a very nice experience, and uh, personally, I think that Ghana has uh, has a beautiful future uh, in front of it, and uh, and uh, to to give you uh, just a hint, uh, we are going to uh, expand our 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 capacity. Uh, we have already approved uh, to add another factory 
here in Ghana of 1.2 million tons. We have already an existing 1.2 million. And we are adding another 1.2 million. So you're doubling your capacity, basically. We are, we are more than doubling capacity. And we are studying also other opportunities of investments. So, uh, so I think uh, the future will be bright. <laughs> Definitely will. Be. Today. Definitely will be. So, I mean, last thing, you've, you've wished everybody a happy National Day. Was there anything special you want to tell Ghanaians and Moroccans, of course, on the day that we're celebrating the ascension of His Majesty King Mohammed VI to the throne? Of the kingdom of I think what um, I think we have a lot of things to learn from each other. Uh, we have different cultures. We have different, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, different models of development, and I think we we can learn from each other a lot. Uh, I think Morocco as well uh, during this last uh, 20, 22 years have 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 made a great great improvements uh, in his uh, economy his economy uh, i think during these years we have developed a lot our infrastructure we are today working on uh, on uh, on a social model to develop our social uh, let's say um, uh, social management and uh, and I think uh, Ghana is on the same track, so I think we have to benchmark. Uh, Morocco is very strong in agriculture, for instance, and I think Ghana could learn from... Absolutely. Okay. You're still watching Diplomatic License right here on City TV. My name is Apioka, and if you just joined us, we've been celebrating the Moroccan National Day. It commemorates, of course, the enthronement of His Majesty Mohammed VI, who is the king of the Kingdom of Morocco. And I have here Peter. Peter is the president of the Ghana Morocco Old Students Association. How are you? I'm doing great. Good, good to see you. Good to see you too. Good. So tell us, because I'm sure many people, I didn't know until very recently that there was an association like yours. I didn't even realize that Morocco was giving up to 70 scholarships and, and actually 90 because there are some that are also being given to people for vocational studies and what's so I didn't realize how big the educational relationship between Ghana and Morocco was but you're a beneficiary of that and you're nicely dressed <laughs> like a Moroccan man but you're Ghanaian yes, so please tell us all about this like how does it work how did you end up in Morocco and what does this relationship mean to you yeah um, I think the, the scholarship started in 2002 so next year will be exactly 10, uh, 20 years that the scholarship started and um, you, are, you apply through the Ghana Scholarship Secretariat okay. and then you go for an interview and then you are given a scholarship to go and study in Morocco. Okay. And so it's a proper partnership between our governments basically? Sure. Okay. I think it was um, His Excellency Ambassador, um, His Excellency President Kufo who actually um, had that agreement signed during his time and then it, it started from that time. Okay. Okay, and so you went to Morocco in which year? 2004. Was it your first time there? Yes, yeah, it was my first time. Okay, what was the experience like? Yeah, um, Morocco being a, an Arab country and at the same time um, the official language is um, Arabic and then next to that is French oh. and we are Anglophones. Absolutely. So when I, before I went, you know, we had that fear. Um, Anglophones and how you know, difficult it is for us to learn French. So it was actually um, um, not some, something that you would want to an experience but it was a challenge for us so um, personally when I went there I, I didn't understand French so we the Anglophones we go there and we learn for one year French before you then go to your school to go and study the course that you are there to study okay. yeah so it was very um, challenging but Don't at the same time to, to parle français maintenant oui pas français ah. Okay, good. <laughs> good. You didn't expect that. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, so but what did you study? I studied economic science and management. Okay. Yeah. In face. So you do you do one year French in Rabat and then from there you go to your goal to go and based on the course that you want to study, then you that will determine the city that you go and then okay. do your course. So everybody starts off in Rabat because you need to learn French. Yeah. 
for the Anglophones, the all, all the students from Anglophone countries, we have to go to Rabat and do our French before we finally go to okay. our schools. So at the time that you went there, 2004, did you meet any other Ghanaians or you were the first group of people who were really going in as, as people from Ghana? As I said, the scholarship started in 2002 and I went there in 2004. So we had two batches already okay. there, you know, so they were very supportive. Yeah, at least when we are discouraged, we look up to them and we, we, we know that definitely we can also make it because the French wasn't, it wasn't easy because you actually learn French, you know, in French. Yeah, <laughs> so that would be difficult. Definitely. So that would be difficult. they were there to support us. And, yeah. and now it's time to speak to the country manager of Royal Air Maroc, the Royal Air Carrier, national carrier of Morocco. And since we're celebrating Morocco's National Day, we must speak to him. So, hello. How are Hi. you doing? Fine, Hi. Thank you. Good. It's nice to see you here. My pleasure. Good. How long have you been in Ghana? Uh, almost three years. <laughs> okay. How do you find it? Uh, it's, it's very good. Okay. I appreciate uh, being here. And, uh, I'm not feeling insane really. I'm, I'm feeling home. Yeah, well, that's good. We're, we're still on the continent, so anywhere yeah, is that's home. Africa. <laughs> it's Africa. Anywhere Most is of home. people in North Africa say Africa, but they don't know we're well, still in the same continent. <laughs> <laughs> See? It's true. So, was this your first time in Ghana? Yeah, that's my first okay, time. Okay, so yeah. it's your posting that brought you here. It is your posting at Air Maroc that yeah, brought yeah. you to Ghana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, before here, where were you? Were you in Morocco or you uh, were? I've been, I've, I've been through three experiences. The first one was in Central Africa, Bongi, okay. and the second one was in Togo, and then I just crossed the border and came to Ankara. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds good. Yeah. So, this, so is this the first country that you've been in that's Anglophone? Yeah, that was Francophone. Yes. The Anglophone one is the Accra. Accra. Yeah. And how has that experience been? You know, being in an Anglophone country, is the business different? Uh, really, it's it's very different in the sense that uh, I mean, the Francophone people are very organized. Uh, it seems that at all level, banking, uh, airlines, uh, uh, even internet, entertainment, uh, everything is. is it's exciting in, in English countries. Yeah. 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 So, so Ghana has been good to you. That's a uh, good thing. I, I prefer. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now my next question to you would be, which parts of Morocco are you from? I'm from Casablanca, from but Casablanca. I'm originally from Orzizad, the south of Morocco. Okay. And what was it like growing up, you know, first in the south and then in Casablanca, living there for you? Well, I think Casablanca is uh, an international city. If you go yourself, you will feel uh, at home. It's uh, a melting pot, like we said for New York, we said for, for Quebec in, in, in Canada. It's, it's a very huge uh, city where you can find uh, a lot of communities in the sense that we are talking later about the students, Ghanaian students over there, almost 400 students. Uh, I think Casablanca is, uh, is the home of everybody. Yeah. So for you, uh, where you were working in Casablanca, okay, so still with Royal Air Maroc, or you had other jobs that you were doing before you moved to the National um, Carrier? Before the National Carrier, I was working for uh, a hotel, okay. an international thing, and after that I moved to the airline okay. Royal Maroc. That was in 1992. Okay, so after that you moved to a hotel for the sky? Yeah, <laughs> from land to sky, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hotel for the sky. So how much longer are you going to be in Ghana? Normally, uh, it's like four years, but up to with the COVID and so on, it should be like five years. Yeah. How has the COVID been for you? Do you have your family living here or they are Morocco? How have you managed? Uh, it was a bit very difficult in the sense that my wife left to Morocco. My kids are in French for studies and uh, we're like a disparate oh, family yeah. right yes. now. Yeah. You're all over it's, the it's place. Ve it's very difficult. Yeah. And especially you know, before we used to travel, I mean, uh, before the COVID, it was like pack your bag and the next morning you fly. Today, if you want to fly, it's a whole procedure yeah. you have to follow. Yeah. So it starts being very difficult for my wife to come here or for me to go to Casablanca. Yeah. How are you managing? <laughs> oh, I'm doing my best. Yeah. You are. <laughs> Unless I get the authorization for my wife to get another Guinean wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's going to agree to that. Well, <laughs> try to help me. <laughs> Wonderful speaking to you. Yeah, and, my pleasure. And, it's a um, very I mean, we're, we're celebrating the anniversary of the enthronement of 
King Mohammed VI, of course, of Morocco. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to say to the Moroccan community here in Ghana, home, abroad, and then even to Ghanaians who are celebrating with you today? Okay, to the Moroccan in Ghana, we say in Arabic, Eid Mubarak Saeed. وأجمل تهاني للشعب المغربي والحكومة المغربية صعب جدا. That's my question, but it's in Arabic. Can can you try to translate what it means briefly? Yeah, this is my question. A good for Moroccans and for the Moroccan government and His Majesty the King Mohammed the Sixth. Hello again, and now it's time for me to speak to Sheikh Mustafa Ibrahim and. He is doing something very, very important in Ghana, and not just for Ghana, for the continent as well, when it comes to faith, when it comes to ensuring that there's peace and unity, and of course, just living together in harmony as Africans, as one people, regardless of what our beliefs are. Good evening, Sheikh. Good evening. How are you? Fine, fine. So please, talk to us about your foundation, because you are doing a lot of work, and you are very much and you've been very instrumental in making sure that the way when people come to Ghana, they say, oh, Muslims, Christians, we are all living in peace, we are all exactly. living, how do we do it? You've been very instrumental in this, so please, talk to us about your work. Thank you so much. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. I think uh, we have to thank the king, Hamad Sadis of Morocco, for doing a very, very good work. For Africa. In fact, he realized that Islam is being misunderstood in Africa and he needs to bring together the Islamic scholars to come together irrespective of various faiths which it belongs to. So he made sure that Ulama from Nigeria, Senegal, Every Coast, Cameroon, Congo, to understand one another. Mm. She propagates the real, the real message of Islam. Mm. For Islam in peace, submission, the will of God. Mm. But why that Muslims always fight? Yeah. We, are about to be mm. we are bound to our differences. Mm. But this should be breakers. Mm. This should be cause of us. We should make a fight. Mm. See, we should do our best. To promote peace. If I belong to this, this sect, these sects, they are Muslims. We all believe in one God. We believe in one Salah and Salah. Why should we fight? So we should come together and implement programs that to benefit mankind, that to benefit the country, that to benefit the people of Ghana and the government. So King Mohammed, the, 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 the key of the Mohammed Sal Foundation, it is best to promote education. You know, education like the Muslims are far behind. Mm. He wants to promote education, both Islamically and uh, uh, secular okay. education. And as you know, the uh, the government gives scholarship to Ghana to, to, to pursue various courses. Yes. And this foundation is really the best to promote that to send people to go outside, to go and learn, and let people understand this in a true perspective. So inshallah, it has been found just quite recent, but it has achieved a lot for this short period. He has the love and feeling for Africa, and may Allah help him to, to achieve what he wants to do. I think that a big project that will help Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sheikh. So I've been speaking to Sheikh Mustafa Ibrahim, and I mean, you've heard him. So much work is going on, and it's a perfect day to talk about this foundation that he represents because we are celebrating and commemorating, you know, the enthronement. And I'll say it once again, I can't say it enough, of His Majesty King Mohammed VI of the Kingdom of Morocco. Thank you. We've been invited here to a small celebration, COVID because by Her Excellency, Iman Guadil, who is of course the king's representative to Ghana, the ambassador of the King of Morocco to Ghana. So we're doing our Moroccan suites. If you've been following all my conversations with Her Excellency over time and even the 
Moroccans love their sweets, and I'm a sweet tooth, so I don't mind. So this has been Diplomatic License right here on City TV. We've been celebrating Morocco Day. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for another exciting, exhilarating, and clearly a very unique episode of the show next week. My name is Apioko. Bonsoir.